Welcome to the uh, oh August 10th Scrapbook Live. I'm Megan Jacks. And uh, like I said, today's project is going to be based on the uh, Creative Memories blog post. It was from March 18th of 2022, and it has the wide open places um, uh, uh, layout on there. And I am going to be using the wide open places layout or uh, the papers, but I have um, other photos. I'm not going to be using quite as many laser cut borders that they use. That layout had a lot of laser cut borders on there. So that handout that you can get um, in the pinned comment, if you're watching this on Facebook Live, if you're watching this later on YouTube, it'll be in the description. Um, you'll be able to get the handout. And here you can see here, I have the sketch listed as well, has those measurements on it. And here's where you can kind of see a little bit more of a breakdown of they give you some indications of maybe some borders. Um, they have this circle element over here on this side here. And then of course, the photos that are um, on here as well. So um, we will, I'm going to show you what I've got. So I'm going to go come over here to my desktop. And here you can see I have got more photos from my adventures when I went over uh, to Pullman, Washington for my son's orientation in Washington State. I went for a drive around while he was doing some orientation stuff. And uh, Pullman, Washington is in, on, in eastern Washington, and that is wheat country. Um, so they grow a lot of wheat and I did not really realize that, but they grow just tons of wheat over in the um, eastern Washington, the southeast uh, part of the state. And so everywhere you would go, you'd see all these wheat fields. And they had combinations of the wheat fields. Some areas were a little bit more green. Maybe they had the summer wheat that will be harvested, I think, this fall. And then they had the winter wheat that pops back up and they start to harvest in July. They also grow a lot of what they call, I think it's called rapeseed, which is uh, what they call, use for canola oil. So some fields um, were bright yellow for um, the, the those rapeseed flowers are a bright, vibrant yellow and almost looks like a neon color, but I don't have any photos of that right now. So I have three photos picked out. And so if we look at the sketch itself, I have, I'm going to be using um, this landscape photo here in this place. I have another photo, once again, more landscape. It was just beautiful, rolling hills, the valleys, um, all the fields there. Uh, I, I cut this down to a four by five to match the measurements in the sketch. And then where they have this half circle or this partial circle that they uh, built their embellishment cluster on, I am actually going to trim down a photo to go there. I didn't feel like I needed to necessarily build a big um, embellishment cluster here. I had photos that I wanted to include, so I'm gonna be doing that. So um, the other part is I'll be working with some, um, adding in some border details. And the one thing that I really liked about this particular sketch was you can see at the bottom, they have a band for journaling just at the very bottom of the page. So it's a great way if you wanna be able to build a page all above the top here. And then at the very bottom, you just had, it was about an inch and a quarter of journaling that you could include at the bottom. So I thought that was a nice touch, especially if you aren't sure how to work in your journaling necessarily with the rest of your page, you can just, you know, make sure you leave your space, uh, some room at the bottom, attach some journaling uh, paper, and you're all set to go. So I did say that I am going to be using the Wide Open Places collection. So I'm starting off with uh, a background. And the background that I've chosen is kind of this um, rusty whitish color. The opposite side is the galvanized tin, which is, um, this is from the tonal pack of the Wide Open Places. So I'm, this is gonna be my base page that I'm gonna build everything on. So as I put my photos on here, you can kind of get an idea of what it's gonna start to look like. Now it is a matter of adding the details, right? This is this layout is all in the details, building our top border, building our bottom border. I want my photos to stand out. So I wanna make sure I keep that in mind. So the first thing I did, because it was a very specific detail is, I actually have my journal paper already cut. This is Spargo journal paper, which I have cut down to that inch and a quarter. All right, so I am actually gonna go ahead and just cut straight to the point here and I am going to adhere that in place because I already know that goes there. 
that's a key feature of this layout that I want to keep. So I'm just going to attach that and that's going to let me start to build everything else around it. If you didn't have journal paper and you just wanted to, um, you know, just draw some lines, depending on the background paper that you're using, you could just draw some lines. I could have done that. Um, just had some lines here at the bottom. The next part, if I'm, you know, looking at this and realizing how much do I need to vary my layout in terms of the measurements that I give you with this sketch. For this particular layout, I don't know that I need to vary things too much. So if I start to look at like at the bottom here, they have the darker border is about uh, 12 by three quarters inch tall. It has a thin strip that is 12 inches wide by a quarter. So about one inch total. You can see on this on the actual layout, it's that dark brown that has then that brownish color right above it. Um, it's kind of that rusty color. So depending on what I'm gonna do here, I can either go ahead and have a one inch piece of paper or I can use the uh, two pieces. I am actually, I have, I'm gonna be using this kind of barn color, uh, the barn wood. And it is from the, I had to double check here. It's also from the tonal pack of the, the wide open places. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and cut a one inch piece of this. And I want my barn board to be going. Um, I'm gonna, so I want, I wanna see all these pieces of wood. So I'm gonna cut it perpendicular to those lines. So my barn boards are going horizontal. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut it at one inch. If I decide to add that thin band, I will be able to just layer it over the top. So next here, got a little bit of a mess going on. I'm a messy, messy scrapbooker. I'm just going to tell you right now. When it comes, push comes to shove, I am messy, especially when I'm trying to work all these different colors and papers. I'm using scraps. I have a lot of scraps from wide open places, so I'm grabbing that. I'm going to go ahead and tack this one inch band. Actually, I'm going to leave it for now. I'm not going to tack it in place. I have, it's just rusty against the bottom of this uh, border here. And like I said, I was in wheat country. And so I want to go ahead and capitalize on that wheat country. And what I'm going to do here is I want to use the wheat field punch. So if you tuned into Power Hour last night, you saw that I used the wheat field punch in my layout. And these were pictures taken as part of actually that same day. So this is me just driving around the countryside um, near Pullman. The other photos that I had as part of my power hour layout were actually taken down by the Snake River. So I'm out away from the farms. This is, these are the farms that are in that area. So I used a piece, I punched already with the wheat field punch. And this is pear cardstock because I wanted to capitalize on, you know, the, it's, it's, they are green wheat that's starting to work its way to drying out, ready for harvest. So it's not quite green, not quite brown for harvest. But I am going to go ahead and layer in some autumn hay. So one of the things I wanted to talk about here is when you're layering pieces. When I punch with the wheat field punch, I don't want a direct shadow. When I first punched this wheat field punch, I started at the black line here. So I wanna offset a little bit. I, I want my wheat to be staggered. So when I may start my punch with my autumn hay, I'm actually gonna come over and I'm gonna start it. I usually just go ahead, I'm gonna start flush with the edge, the white edge here. So I just shifted it over. I started my pear paper, the first border with on the black line. I'm gonna shift it over a little bit and that's gonna give me a natural offset. So I just punch once and I have to back, move it back to the left or to the right to get the, what I offset and then I will continue on punching the line here. My autumn hay is going to be behind my pear. So this will be the background. 
So you can see here when I line these up edge to edge, I have that natural variation. You could also, since you're punching cardstock, I also could have flipped it. Even if I had uh, gone the same way, I would have been able to just flip it. And that would be an option too. That can kind of be nice because especially with this, you have the wheat going one way, maybe the wheat going the other way can be an option. But I'm going to do it the way I had it. So I'm going to go ahead. I need to trim off the autumn hay from the, uh, the piece here, get those wheat pieces off. I'm going to trim it at about an inch and a half. Well, and then I'm going to do just a quick, I'll attach it, grab my repositionable adhesive, and I'm going to attach the pair to the front of that autumn hay. I'm bringing it down ever so slightly. I want to have the autumn hay, the those, the autumn hay just be a little bit taller. There we go. All right. So now if I bring back over my layout as I've got it going here, I can bring my, imagine it's starting to take place there. I am, I'm going to, if I layer my autumn hay just right on, or my wheat field punches, just right on top of that barn board. Now I'm going to use the fence put, uh, laser cut border from the wide open places. I think that's a nice touch. And it's starting to take shape there. When I need to cut this photo down with the circle, I'm going to tuck it under a little bit so that the wheat field punch will kind of come over that road. So I'm going to go ahead and actually do that next. If So the next piece I'm going to do, I'm basically building this from the top up, and I'll need to do some shifting around um, as I go up the page. So they tell us in the directions that we want to... Um, we want to use circle number two, which is the medium circle. And you would cut it with the red blade on the outside track. So I am not going to be able to cut a full circle with this, right? I don't need a full circle because the bottom portion of the circle is not even shown. If you're going to cut a background piece there to do your embellishment cluster, you can go ahead and cut that full size circle. But I don't need and I can't cut it. So what I am going to do is I'm going to bring this down. And I think I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to be good, I think, cutting it with the red blade. I could have made some adjustments here. I do want to mat it, so I wouldn't want to cut it with the blue blade because then I can't go any wider to cut a mat. The red blade will let me cut a mat with either the green or the blue blade to mat it with. So I'm going to cut it with the red blade. The biggest thing is making sure that I cut clear the top and that I want this scene here in the middle to be in the middle. And I'm gonna have to kind of wing it a little bit because I'm not, well, I can just tuck it down further in the page. We'll be good. All right, I think I am good there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut. I always get nervous when I cut the photos with the custom cutting system. It's not something I normally do. I don't normally cut my photos into circles or ovals. But this one, I didn't feel like I needed to set an embellishment scene because I had these lovely scenery photos. So I'm going to let them do the work for me rather than the embellishments. I do have a small embellishment cluster I will be putting on the page. So I'm not going to not use stickers and embellishments. But um, for this prime real estate down here in the lower court portion, I'm going to go ahead and just use that photo. So put that. Imagine this is going to come in like such. Layer this in here. I've got a lot of blue here at the top. 
I could probably bring this down a little bit more. And now it's about uh, figuring out how I'm going to do the top. I'll go ahead and map these. This particular photo here, I have a lot of blue that I can cut off the top if I need to narrow it. I could also cut a little bit off the bottom. So even though they tell me it's a four by six, I might need to adjust. One of the things I was thinking about with all of this blue here is I could use some stickers and actually put my title across the top here. So I'm going to go kind of with this for right now. This is just like I said, I'm doing a dry fit. I'm just kind of putting the pieces into place, getting a feel for how everything's going to work out. Now at the top, some features at the top. They have three laser cut borders stacked there, and that's fantastic, but I did not want to use three of my laser cut borders. I think they actually have a total of five on this border. There's two laser cut borders at the bottom and three at the top. So I give you a suggestion if you like that half circle, um, the detail there, you could just use circle number two and use the blue blade on the inside track would give you two inch circles. You cut them in half, you layer them across like a banner and you're good to go. You could of course use any of the border punches. Uh, maybe you do want to use the laser cut borders depending on what you have. It doesn't have to be that scalloped kind of swoopy look that half circles give you. It could be anything there. So any kind of, um, you know, maybe a little bit of a chunkier border effect. And then you would follow up if you wanted to with a couple of smaller border details, really just depending on what you like. Maybe you only want to have two borders. Maybe you don't have room for all of this. So you really need to dial it back. As you're working with any of the sketches, just go where the layout takes you, where your photos take you and all that kind of fun stuff. So what I'm gonna be doing here is I actually decided, I wanted to do the swoopy look, I liked it, and I thought that the new um, border punch here, which is called Sunshine Arches, this is a new border maker cartridge, I thought that would be really nice. So I'm gonna punch this out in charcoal cardstock. And it's going to serve as kind of the place of that swoopy half circle border. So I've got my border maker cartridge. Put my charcoal cardstock in here. I love these mid-tone, or actually it's a little slightly darker, but neutrals. I was excited when they gave us this charcoal. This sunshine arches in this dark gray looks really industrial. So it's gonna be a good punch to use. It just came out. So if you didn't grab it already, you can put it on your wish list. And I don't need, I really don't need much beyond my arches here. So when I trim this, I'm gonna trim it fairly close. I'm gonna trim it, just push it past there a little bit. I can layer over the top. I want to keep my arches together, but I don't need a lot. I'm not going to have a lot of that charcoal showing. All right. So there we go. Now we're starting to see how our frame is taking shape, right? You see, I've got the center section for my photos. And now I'm starting to build that top border. So I did pick out the windmill laser cut border. I thought that would look really well. And what I think I'm going to do is I love this multicolored stripish uh, paper. And I think I'm going to bring that in here at the top. And I think honestly, I'm not going to worry about putting a third detail at the top. I'm going to cut this down. I am not going to worry about a second border at the top. So a three elements. I have my sunshine arches. I have the windmill. And then I've got this nice, um, multicolored detail across the top. And I think that'll be enough interest. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this. Um, at the top here, they, they told us in the directions to go ahead and you would cut a one and three quarter inch piece at the top of the layout. And I, I have definitely worked in reverse order on this layout. I think they had us starting at the top and I started at the bottom working up at the top. So the one and three quarter de uh, directions is actually step number two. I'm going to go ahead and cut this to, well, let me see here. I think I don't need to cut it. I think I'm going to cut it to, I'm looking at my mat here. 
And based on my spacing, I think I'm gonna cut it to an inch and a quarter. And it might overlap a little bit, an inch and a quarter. We'll start with an inch and a quarter. The one and three quarters inch would come down way too far. And since I've got the see-through components of this Sunshine Arches, I don't want to have it extend too far down. I see a comment from Sharon about the floor full of confetti. Yes, my floor in here is ridiculous. I need an intervention. I need to grab my, I need to clean it and then vacuum up all the scrap pieces. So like I said, I'm messy. I've got pieces everywhere. I try really hard to scrape it into my trash bin, but I'll admit my trash bin is overflowing. So it kind of hits it and then bounces out. So there, now you see it, you can start to see it starting to take shape here. So now I have some kind of starting to get into some final decisions before I adhere things into place. I want to go ahead and mat my photos. I will be using the, um, it's kind of like this tonal brown rope, and it is from the designer paper pack. The opposite side has the silhouettes of the farm animals on there, or the ranch animals, horses and cows. Uh, so I'm going to be using that to do my math. In fact, I've already cut a couple of them because I needed to make sure that things were going to fit right. So I went with their directions, which was uh, a four by five photo with a four and a quarter by five and a quarter inch mat, giving you about an eighth of an inch all the way around. So it's not a real chunky mat. It's kind of a thinner mat. And let me just go ahead and um, adhere these photos in place so that when I start moving things around, my photos will just stay with the mats. The exception, I guess, will be this one because I might have to cut it. I don't know. I've got a lot of overlap at the bottom and I've got a ton of blue at the top. I think I'm gonna go, I am gonna go ahead and trim this. I'm gonna get out my squeaky personal trimmer. I have an old blue one. It's super squeaky. You may hear it. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to bring this back. Well, I'm going to, I'm going to go all in. I'm going to say, I'm going to bring it back by a, a half an inch. So I trimmed off a half an inch. So I need to trim off a half an inch of my mat. I trimmed a half an inch from my photo. I'll trim a half an inch off that mat, which I'd already pre-cut to be about a quarter of an inch wider. And now when I raise that up, it doesn't overlap quite as much. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and cut a mat for this um, photo here because I do, I think it needs that brown mat to go around it to really make it feel just polished off there. So let me slide my paper off to the side. Should have had a second mat up here, but I don't. It's got another project sitting on it waiting to be finished. All right, so I use the red blade. Now remember when we cut with our blades, they each come out by um, a quarter of an inch wider, meaning I have an eighth of an inch on either side. So if I cut my photo with the red blade, I wanna cut my mat with the green blade. And that should give me about that same quarter inch or eighth of an inch mat that I have here. If I had a chunkier mat going on this one, I might need to go ahead and use the blue blade to get that chunkier mat all the way around it. But the green blade, the green blade is what I'm gonna use. Just need to make sure I'm gonna clear it at the top. And I should clear it. I'm gonna bring it down just a smidge. I'm working with a scrap, so I'm hoping that this works. We'll see. It's okay if it's not perfect. You can see I'm, I'm not perfect there, but that all gets tucked under anyway. So 
so. I'm liking where this is going. So like I like to do a full dry fit before I put pieces into place. I just like to know. I usually actually use a scrap easel, which is one of those magnetic boards. I will magnet everything into place and then I will um, make sure I like it. And then sometimes I take a picture of it with my phone because when I pull all the magnets and everything off, I basically have all those pieces and I need to recreate it as I adhere it all together. So I have talked about that scrap and easel before and I do. I really, really like it. So I'm at my journaling down here. I could do some additional um, stickers or embellishments along the bottom here. There was this cute little truck hauling hay, which let me tell you, there's a lot of hay that comes out of these fields because I think like they chop off the top of the wheat and then what's left, they harvest or mow for wheat. I don't know. I still have a lot to learn about wheat. I grew up in Iowa and my grandpa did corn and soybeans. So I know corn and soybeans. I do not know wheat. I went ahead and out of one of the mats, I cut out this uh, oval and I decided I was going to go ahead and do a little embellishment cluster up here. I didn't have another small photo, so I was going to go ahead. There were some red barns that I saw and I'm going to go ahead and put the wheat stalks on either side. And then there is a lovely sticker. There's actually a couple of stickers. I was gonna, I was either gonna use Country Life because I like that it pulled up that um, that uh, kind of bluish color, which actually um, I'm gonna pull some of that blue color down here. I think so. Let me start adhering things. I need to get things adhered into place so I can put these things on that are stickers. The punch at the top of the page, there's a question asking about that. This punch right here, it was called Sunshine Arches. It is the newest border maker cartridge from Creative Memories. Super cute, very industrial feeling. So look great, of course, as sunshine, but I tar punched it in that charcoal and it looks fantastic. So I'm gonna start adhering, starting at the bottom. And I am just butting things up against that journal strip that I put. Go ahead, I'm gonna attach my wheat field punches. And I'm not going to put much adhesive. I'll put some repositionable on this side, but I'm not right here because I need to be able to tuck in my photo. So put those on, I'm gonna adhere my photos to the, I'm just rubbing my fingernail. When I use that custom cutting system, sometimes it lifts that edge just a little bit. And I'm just using the back of my fingernail. You could use your multi-purpose tool just to kind of tuck down those, what feels like a lift edge. That works just fine. Mat my photos. And before I put my photos on, I will adhere the top border so that I can see what my open space is. And that way I can get all the pictures centered and placed in there correctly. I have seen some notes from some people that are watching during lunch. And that was the, the time. The, the 10 o'clock time works really well for me. I'm trying to do stuff later in the afternoons can be a difficult with my schedule. Uh, so being able to do something during the day is a great option. So I appreciate being able, you guys tuning in, maybe you're catching it on lunch hour. Maybe you're going to watch this later. So there's my multicolored at the top there. I am going to come in Lining this back up, I'm pretty certain I cut that multicolored strip straight, but I'm going to use it to help line up my sunshine arches. My sunshine arches, I'm putting about an inch and a quarter down. 
I'm using repositionable. If I need to, for some reason, to come back and make some adjustments, I can. Um, that might be a little too far down. Maybe I'm gonna need a little bit more space. Yeah, I'm gonna adjust my sunshine arches up just a smidge. I just want a little bit more space here. So I'm actually gonna bring them just uh, closer to one inch. I just don't want any of the uh, multicolored piece to show through. There we go. Now I can just bring that up just a little bit more. All right, I think, yeah, that'll be good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and adhere my, um, the windmill laser cut border in place. And I'm just, I'm using regular adhesive on this, but I'm just making sure to use it across the bigger portions. One side of this windmill is a little, has a little bit of a green tone to it. The other side is that gray. I'm sticking with the gray. I think it's a nice compliment to the dark charcoal of the pieces below it. Definitely a very industrial look or a, you know, lots of metal. There's tons of metal on a, on a farm. That's for sure. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'll put the, uh, I have the, the, the laser cut border here up at the bottom. Let me go ahead. I'm going to put this, my embellishment cluster here. Because before I put my photos on, I know this goes up here at the top. Let me put this in place. Now, I cheated a little bit when I made this embellishment cluster. These are actually stickers. All of these pieces are stickers. But because I was playing around with it, normally I only worry about this if I'm like, trying to pre-do something for like a class and I'm trying to figure it out. I actually put baking soda on the back of them to remove the sticky. So that's why mine are just acting like they're embellishments. Yours wouldn't necessarily do this. So what I found when I do that, how I get them to stick is I have the adhesive dots that were part of the adhesive buffet a little while ago. And that does a pretty good job of then getting everything adhered on here. Once I put the page protector on, everything will be nice and snug. Nothing's gonna fall off. You could also use foam dots. The foam adhesive would work too, but I'm just gonna use reposition or the, the adhesive dots here. I don't normally recommend doing this if you're just wanting to play. Um, I know if you're using foam dots and you want to remove the sticky so that it doesn't like stick in places you don't want, that's the baking soda is a good option. So I'm gonna put the put the please. I gotta make sure to move, lift it up just a little bit. And then I put my put on those wheat pieces to kind of just frame out the bottom. And then I will have the um, actual sticker that I'll put on here is a sticker. I didn't remove the adhesive backing on it. And it says country life. So put that on here. You could maybe use foam dots if you want. I'm not gonna worry about going so dimensional on my page. My, I think everything's a little crooked. I feel like my, had the leaning barn of Pullman over here. I needed to straighten that out a little bit, but you can kind of see how that's, show that up there a little bit closer, how that came together. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and put my photos on and then finish out some of these details. They have a little bit of an overlap with your photos here. So I will keep that overlap. And then we'll get this 
half the half circle or it's more than a half circle, three quarter circle, whatever it is tucked in here. Now, one thing I mentioned, what in our sketch, they do use a piece here at the bottom to kind of separate the journal box from the uh, rusty uh, color they've got going. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and mimic that. I'm gonna use a piece of, um, if I can cut it small enough, this pa plaid paper. This is um, from the designer paper pack. It just has the same, it's the same plaid that's up here in that country life sticker, which will be nice to carry that color back down here to the bottom. Just give us a little bit of balance. And I'm gonna cut this at a quarter of an inch. So um, we're gonna hope for the best. I've got some narrow strips here. We will see if I can cut this. An option is to use post-it notes to help hold it in place. So I've lined this up at about a quarter of an inch. I'm gonna use some post-it notes to hold these smaller pieces. My fingers just don't reach in there. So we'll use post-it notes. Cut that quarter inch piece. That's pretty good. Worked out really well till you do that. Post-it notes to the rescue again. And then we'll come in here at the bottom. And then I'll probably go ahead and put the truck in here somewhere because we do see, we see trucks, big trucks with those wheat. And there's other stickers and embellishments or this, there's additional stickers that I could um, see about putting on here. There is this fun windmill. So I may play around with that a little bit more to see if there's something else that I would want to include um, down here at the bottom. But for now, I think that's pretty much gonna be it. I'm gonna put my fence piece and my thin cut dark teal in place. And thinking about probably, you know, I'll probably put a title on here. And I'm really thinking I'm probably going to try to go right in here um, with my title. And I'll probably, I got to see if I have all the, the letters to be able to either spell out Whitman County um, or, you know, Wheat Country or something like that. They actually have a little sign as you enter in Whitman County that says it's the largest, it produces the most wheat by county than any other um, county in the U.S., so you're like, oh, well, that's pretty exciting that they produce all that wheat. And they do produce a lot of wheat. Eastern Washington counties are huge, right? I'm from the Midwest, and we had all those dinky little counties, you know, the 99 counties in Iowa. Um, in Washington, there's definitely not 99 counties, and they're all pretty big counties. So, yeah, you're going to produce a lot of wheat when um, your particular county takes up as much square mileage as it does there in Whitman County. So there we go. That's going to be the layout for today. So I might see, like I'll, I said, I'll, I'll see about getting that title put on there if I'm going to add any more stickers or embellishments, but that, you know, nice. Um, it's all about being inspired by the layout. It was part of the blog. Yeah, so Sandy's over there saying it is, it's the Palouse. That would be really good. That would be definitely saying the Palouse. That is the area that they call um, Southeast Washington is the Palouse. Um, so there's the layout. I'll get a nice picture of that all taken. And um, yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, I can't wait to see what you guys uh, create and you share with me. 
So um, you can share them to the page, share them in the layouts group. Uh, this live is going to be in my scrapbooking with Megan group. You can share your layouts there too. So it's always exciting to see what people create. I'd love to see if you guys use other collections or anything like that. Like I said, I stuck with the um, same wide open places. Um, just dialed it back a little bit on some of those embellishments and made it work for my photos. So next, um, this week coming up, like I said, this was kind of a teaser into the uh, virtual crop that's coming up this weekend for Creative Memories. That will start on uh, Friday at 1 p.m. Central. So it's 11 a.m. Pacific. They will have every two hours. They, or is it two hours? Yeah, I think it's every two hours. So, so on Friday, they'll post three um, sketches. On, on Saturday, they'll have three more. So I always share those um, the directions or excuse me, the measurements for the sketches. I share those on my Facebook page. I'll also have them on my blog this time. I will be participating, um, doing layouts on Friday, but Saturday it's moving day. I will have measurements for you, but I will not have any layouts from Saturday unless I do those later next week. Now, um, coming up next week, we're going to do scrapbook live again next week, but it's a mystery project. And the reason it is a mystery project is because, well, normally Creative Memories after the um, the uh, virtual crop has their bonus sketches that they put out on Monday. So I'm kind of waiting to see what those bonus sketches are. And maybe we'll put one of those together to uh, put one of those pages together as part of Scrapbook Live next week. So once I see what comes out on um, Monday for the bonus sketches, we'll figure out whether we want to, or I will figure out whether or not I want to put one of those together. And then we can, you know, help you get some of those pages done so you can um, share them in the virtual crop group and be entered into the prize drawings that Creative Memories does with those bonus sketches. So as long as Creative Memories posts that on Monday, I'll get the handouts all ready to post to the blog and to the event on Tuesday. And so you'll have those all ready for Scrapbook Live on Wednesday next week. So um, if you had a hard time with this layout, or if you stuck around and you were having glitchy problems, thanks for sticking around. But you will be able to rewatch this or um, if you're coming at the tail end, it will go up onto my YouTube channel. Facebook will have it available on the Facebook page. Um, so you can watch it later if you didn't have a chance to watch the full version of it today. So I am recording it. I'm so proud of myself to remember to hit record. Um, and so I'll get all that uploaded to YouTube. We'll have the final photo here to show you guys. And um, so, yeah. All right. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. I'm looking forward to see what you create for the virtual crop. We will see you next week um, with Scrapbook Live. Same time same place. And if you have to miss it, you can catch it on the recording later. All right, everybody have a great day. I will see you all soon.